So by now you already understand the structure of a spreadsheet and essentially understand that a spreadsheet is made up of cells. Now let's take a look at what we can put into Excel cells. So we are going to look at formulas in this lecture and so here you've got a spreadsheet uh, with some cells containing some things in them and other cells being empty and essentially we are looking at cell contents. So what kind of things can a cell contain? So for example if you look at the cell A2 it contains a number so does cell B2 for that matter and cell C3 contains the text Jack so it's just text uh, you know some words written down and then you can see that cell E1 happens to contain a date so from this you can already see that a cell can contain contents of different types. So these are all some examples of cell contents that you have. It so happens that these cell contents are what are called as literals in the sense that the what you see in the cell is what it has. That is the cell content displays literally as what you put into the cell. Now at this point it may not seem very sensible to you as to why am I emphasizing literals. Very shortly you'll see why I'm doing that. right? So numbers, text and date and so on that we've got here, these are literal values that we put into a cell. Of course, as we've already pointed out, several cells in this particular spreadsheet are empty. Okay, now moving on, you may wonder how did these values actually get into the cells. You put values by typing into the cell and one place where you can type values into a cell is the formula bar. right? So if you look into an actual, actual spreadsheet program you'll see this fx and by the side of it is this region which is called as the formula bar. So you can click and type into the formula bar to place a value or formula into a selected cell. right? So for example if this is the currently selected cell and I type something in here and press enter then whatever I, whatever I typed in here will show up in this particular cell. Okay, So that's one way of putting a value into a cell which by selecting the cell and putting in the required value into the formula bar at that point. Alternately you can simply double click within a cell and start typing right in the cell itself and of course the same value will show up in the formula bar. Okay, So those are the two ways by which you can put something into a cell. Right? So that is one is by selecting the cell and typing into the formula bar. Other is double click in a particular cell and start typing the contents directly into the cell. Okay, So the types of cell content we've already seen literals and the, the thing is that when you type a value into a cell depending on the value that you type in Excel tries to determine what type of a value you've put into a cell. So for example, I put in 5 and 6 here. Excel says, okay, the person meant to put the numbers 5 and 6 into these cells and not just the string character or text 5 or 6. Okay, that's just the default assumption that Excel makes. Of course, there would be occasions when you actually put in a number and you don't intend it to be a number. There are ways to handle that. We won't get into that at this point. But usually when you put in a value, Excel uh, sensibly determines the type of value we have stored in a cell. Now the reason a type of value stored in a cell is important is there are some things you can do with certain types of values and some things you cannot. So for example, you can add two numbers together. But you cannot add Jack and Jill as in an arithmetic addition. Right? So certain kinds of operations are permissible on certain types of values and of course Excel has to determine what types of values are in particular cells and it usually does a good job of determining what kind of value we have put into a cell. Okay, So now we've already seen how we can put literals into cells. Right, So all of these things are what they mean. We put in 5 and we got 5 and so on. That's literals. But now let's see the real purpose of using spreadsheet is to perform computations and you perform computations by putting formulas into cells. right? So here let's say that we've got this cell C2 and we want to put in some something into cell C2 to indicate that it is supposed to contain the addition 
the result of adding cells A2 and B2, right? So here, uh, we can put in a formula, of course, by clicking in this, the formula bar, because our C2 is now highlighted. So if we click here and type something, that's going to go into the cell C2. Now, what we want to put in here, as I've already pointed out, is a formula that adds up the contents of A2 and B2. Right? Now, the way Excel distinguishes between a literal and a formula is that formulas always begin with an equals sign. Okay, So, you can enter a formula by saying here first equals and then typing in the formula. Right? So, here what we could do, for example, is to say equals A2 plus B2. Right? So, that's what is going to go into this cell if you type in equals A2 plus B2. And of course, what you're saying is compute uh, the result of adding A2 and B2, which is what we are saying here, A2 plus B2. So, find the result of adding the two of them and put the result in here. right? Or not put the result in there, display the result here. Of course, the cell C2 will contain the formula equals A2 plus B2. But if you enter equals A2 plus B2 and plus press enter, in cell C2, you will see the result of that computation. Okay, So the cell contains a formula, but what you see is the result of that formula. And of course, that's what is going to show up in this particular cell. Now comes a very important question. Okay, So instead of typing equals A2 plus B2, in cell C2, why not just type the formula equals 5 plus 6 or even just the correct answer itself, 11. Right? So we really have three options here. We could say equals A2 plus B2 or we could say equals 5 plus 6 or we could simply put the result 11. So think a little bit about this. What do you prefer of the three options? Which one do you think makes more sense? Think about it before you proceed. Well, if you said equals A2 plus B2 is better, you were spot on. That is because when you write a formula like equals A2 plus B2, then you will get the correct result even if the values in the cells A2 or B2 or both change. Okay, that's the beauty. So the moment you have the formula, then if any of the cells on which the formula is based if the values in those cells changes, then Excel will automatically recalculate every formula in the entire spreadsheet. In this case, there's only one formula, so it's going to recalculate and display the correct result. So to make it concrete, suppose that instead of 5, we change this to 10. right? So nothing. We just go into cell A2 and change the value from 5 to 10. And the moment we press Enter, automatically Excel is going to recalculate the formula equals A2 plus B2 and display the new result 16. Okay, Without us having to do anything further, we just change the value in cell A2 and everything else happens automatically. Whereas, if we had typed equals 5 plus 6 or if we had typed the correct answer 11, then uh, we would not have the response to the change that occurred in cell A2. That's the very important aspect of writing formulas because the moment anything that uh, on which the formula is based, the moment any of those things changes, the formula is automatically recalculated by Excel. Okay, So if your spreadsheet has a thousand formulas and you change one value, then Excel will recalculate automatically every formula that is affected by this change that you made. You really have to do nothing by yourself. You just go and change the value and Excel is going to take care of the rest for you. This is the huge benefit of Excel. Its ability to automatically and almost instantaneously perform all of the recalculations required even in very large spreadsheets. That's the great benefit. Notice that the formula in cell C2 is equals A2 plus B2. And in fact, A2 and B2, as you already know, are addresses of other cells. A2 is a cell address. B2 is a cell address. Right? This is very common. Whenever we write formulas, the formulas we write 
will be based on several cells, cell addresses. In this case, the formula is based on two cell addresses. Now, Excel provides us two ways by which we can enter cell addresses into formulas. And one way is what we've already seen, which is to simply type out the cell address. So, for example, in this cell we typed in, in C2, we typed in equals A2 plus B2. And what we did to get those cell addresses A2 and B2 in there is simply typing them. Okay, that's one way to enter cell addresses in formulas. There's actually another way. The first way is what we've already seen, type in the cell address. Another way and one that you will use quite uh, often is to simply point to the cell that you want. Let's see this in action concretely. So I'm going to, first of all, I've got a blank spreadsheet here. And in A2, I'm going to put 5 as we had before. And in B2, I'm going to put the value 6. Now in C2, our goal is to enter the formula equals A2 plus B2. And one way to do that is to simply go here to the formula bar and type in equals A2 plus B2. Okay. In fact, Excel is not case sensitive, so we can just write equals A2 plus B2. We don't have to hold the caps lock down or anything. And the moment I press enter, I get the result 11. This is as we have looked at earlier. But now I want to show you uh, the other way of entering these two cell addresses, A2 and B2. So I'm going to go here and uh, now incidentally notice that the moment I've selected this cell and if I, the moment I go to the formula bar and click in, it shows me the cells A2 and B2 as colored just to indicate that this particular formula is uh, actually using those cell addresses. Just a visual way of telling us that those cell addresses are actually involved in the formula. I'm just going to back out of this whole thing and I'm going to write a new formula equals A2 plus B2 but in a different way. Of course I'm going to put in A equals as before and now instead of typing A2 I'm just going to go here and click on the cell A2 and notice that Excel inserted A2 automatically for me. Then I go and enter my plus, I just typed it in, and then I go and click on the cell B2 and Excel put in this put in the cell address B2. And then now if I press enter, I see the result. Okay, so those are the two different ways in which you can enter a value for a cell. One is by, uh, for a cell address. One is by typing it in, the other is by pointing to the appropriate cells while you're in the process of editing a formula. Okay, it's now time for you to start working on formulas. So here, you can see a spreadsheet. It's got uh, values in cells D1 and D2. So we want to write a formula in cell D3, which will display the sum of the values above it. Right, sum of the two values above it. Right, in other words, in D3, we want to write a formula that will put the sum of the cells D1 and D2 in there. As always, pause the video, write down this formula on a piece of paper, or if you've got Excel running, put in the numbers in Excel and write a formula, and then continue the video. Okay, so I'm sure that you got the answer correct, and uh, of course the answer is equals D1 plus D2. It's just like equals, you know, A2 plus B2, except that this time the values are in the same column, the column D. And of course, very important, if you forgot the equal sign, then you would have got bizarre results, right? You, it would have simply said D1 plus D2 inside the cell. Because if you don't put the equal sign, Excel doesn't treat it as a formula, and therefore, it just literally puts in whatever you type in. So if you just wrote D1 plus D2 instead of equals D1 plus D2, then D3 is simply going to display D1 plus D2. Not the result of it, but just D1 plus D2. Okay? So equals is very important because that's what tells you that it's actually a formula. That's what tells Excel that it's a formula. Okay? So again, write a formula in D3 to subtract the contents of D2 from the contents of D1. Okay, once again, pause it, write down your answer, and then come back to it. Okay, so once again, I'm pretty sure you got the result. Uh, you got the answer. It's equals D1 minus D2, because we are saying subtract D2 from the content of D1. So D1 minus D2 is the answer. So again, you see the result 20 minus 10 is 10, no problem. Okay, now we are saying here, write a formula in D4 
to find the sum of the contents of uh, B2, D2 and C2, right? Now I'm saying here put the result not in E2 but in D4. So once again just think about uh, what formula you would write and of course if you've got Excel running do this in Excel and then continue the video. Okay, so I hope you got the correct answer. It's going to be the formula you're going to put in is equals B2 plus C2 plus D2. But of course, you're putting the result in D4. It doesn't matter where the result is because it's going to compute the formula. Uh, it's going to execute the formula and put the result. Okay, so it, you know, it doesn't matter. Of course, normally you would not be putting the result here. You would probably logically put the result here. But here we are just looking at whether you understand how to write formulas. That's all. Okay. Now we'll shortly show you a different way to do this, right? Now you're saying, okay, if it's three values, I can write B2, C2, D2. What if it's 10 values? Isn't it going to be tremendously tiresome to type a formula with so many addresses? Yes, that is certainly true. And of course, the people who created these spreadsheet programs are smart enough to realize that that would not be a tenable solution. And there are better ways to do that and we'll show it to you shortly. Okay. Uh, so again, we've already said, uh, talked about automatic recalculation. So we said equals D1 plus D2 and the result now is 30. But of course, suppose we go in and change the value either in cell D1 or in cell D2, automatically the value will get recalculated. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, if I had changed, for example, in D1 instead of 20, suppose I go and change it to 30, then the result will be 40 automatically. We don't have to do anything, just change this value and automatically Excel recalculates. Of course, this is something that we've already shown you. Okay, uh, so we've already seen uh, that equals at the beginning of a formula, at the beginning of a cell entry tells Excel that it's a formula. And then we've shown you the plus sign. Okay, so plus is the addition. So examples are A1 plus B2 or whatever it is, doesn't matter. This is how you would use the plus sign in an Excel formula. And of course, minus is the subtraction. And we've seen an example of how to use it, no problems. For multiplication, we use star. Okay, so you can say equals A1 star B2. That is wherever you want the multiplication operator, you put in the star and Excel would treat that when it occurs in a formula, it would treat the star as a multiplication sign. Similarly, whenever the slash, forward slash occurs in a formula, Excel is going to treat that as the division operator. Remember, this is the forward slash, not the backslash. Backslash is not the division operator. Forward slash is the division operator, right? So you can use these arithmetic operations when you write your formulas.